squirmy, wormy material. I've become somewhat fascinated by this material and the squirmy, wormy fly pattern. You know, is it a fly? Is it a soft plastic worm lure? I don't actually care what you call it because it catches a variety of different species and I've been dying to convert this pattern into jig form. I'm calling today's pattern the murder worm because it is murdered out, which means it's just all black materials and it's just evil looking. This jig pattern is inspired by a variation of the squirmy wormy called the squirminator. I expect this pattern to be deadly effective for some ultralight creek fishing, for some perch, crappie, rock bass, creek smallies, trout. I also think this pattern will be deadly effective in still water under a bobber and also through the ice. We're gonna get right to tying up this jig, but before we do, as a reminder, I will be doing a 100 custom hand tied jig giveaway. And if you want to enter the giveaway, all you need to do is subscribe and hit the bell notifications now so that you get notified when the giveaway goes live. All right, today we are going to be tying on the 1 16th ounce Pillhead Sickle Hook Jig Head by Chase 25 Crappie Jigs, and this is the Black Lizard pattern. And I'll put a link to these jig heads and all of the materials that we're going to be using today down in the description of the video. And today's jig pattern only requires two materials. For my thread today, I'm going to be using some Uni Big Fly 360 Denier thread in a black color. And the most important thing with your thread when working with the squirmy, wormy material is that you you don't use something too thin, like a 70 denier. If you go with a thread that is too thin, like some 70 denier, it can tend to cut into that rubber material. If I was going to recommend a specific size of thread, I would say 210 denier flat wax nylon is probably your best bet, but I just ran out and ordered some more. I am out of 210 denier, so today I'm using some Big Fly. So to start, I'm just going to lay down a base layer of thread from the jig head down to the start of the hook spin. Next, I'm just going to pluck off a single strand of our squirmy, wormy material. Next, I am going to measure out a section of our squirmy, wormy material that is about half an inch longer than our jig head, and I'm going to tie it into the hook shank where we stop that thread with a couple tight wraps. And this rubber material can be a little bit difficult to work with, but just play with it a little bit and make sure that you keep it positioned on the top of the hook shank. Once we have that material tied in with a couple tight wraps in the right position, I'm going to lift up this top section here and I'm going to wrap right in front of that tightly three to four times just to really pinch that material in place so it won't go anywhere. After pinching that in place, I am then going to move my thread up to the jig head with our thread now in position, I'm going to stretch out the foremost piece of our squirmy wormy material, and I'm going to capture that right behind the jig head with three to four tight wraps. After capturing our material right behind the jig head, I am then going to stretch it back in the opposite direction, and I'm going to wind my thread all the way back, tying it into the base of the tail. After reaching the base of the tail, I am then going to wrap my thread back up about a quarter inch behind the jig head. And now with my thread in position, I am going to wrap my squirmy wormy material around the hook shank up to the thread and then tie it off. And now I will make just a few extra wraps around the end of that rubber material, nice and tight to secure it, and then move my thread up to the front of the jig head. And to finish off this pattern, we are now going to add some chenille to the front of the jig, and for that, I'm going to be using some medium black ice chenille by Hairline. I'm just going to take a short two and a half inch section here, and I'm going to remove the fibers from the first quarter inch. And now I'm just going to tie this in and wrap forward to the front of the jig head.
And once I've wrapped my chenille up to the front of the jig head, I'm going to tie that off and finish with a five turn whip finish. And there you have it folks, the murder worm. And this is going to be one of those jigs that just has a ton of movement even when it's not moving. Every little vibration of your hand traveling through the rod, through the line to this jig is going to make that tail quiver just slightly and it's going to entice those strikes. And to demonstrate the subtle action of that tail, let's go ahead and pop this into my mini testing tank and see how it looks. All right, that's gonna do it for the video, and I think this pattern turned out pretty cool, and I'm going to be placing five murder worms into the 100 jig giveaway. And if you're planning on tying some of these up for yourself, I encourage you to experiment with the colors of your jig head, your squirmy wormy material, and your chenille. You could even change up the type of chenille that you use. There's a lot of different things you could do with this pattern. Anyway, thanks for taking time out of your day to watch my video. I hope you guys did enjoy it, and I will see you in the next one.